So we're talking episode four of HBO, The Outsider, where we see Holly pursue a connection similar to Terry's case. We also see Ralph gets his first image of this mysterious supernatural character. And speaking of that character, we may have a name to call him by now. We're going to talk about that and much more. Hey everybody, Elliot here, back with my weekly recap, breakdown, review of the latest episode of HBO's The Outsider. Uh, but before we dive into it, guys, uh, I just want to say, you know, today we lost uh, Kobe Bean Bryant, uh, a hero of mine, uh, a hero that I admire from a distance. I did get the chance to see Kobe play when I was in high school, and I've grown up watching him play basketball. But as I've gotten older, I've also admired what he's done outside of the basketball court in regards to his seeing him raise a family and, and wanting his legacy to carry on for the next generation and you know knowing that we lost him and his 13 year old daughter and also seven other passengers today on that helicopter that crashed uh just my prayers and thoughts and condolences go out to those families and I had to say that because again I, I this is a hero of mine and, it, and it's a sad day uh but we got to celebrate what this man was able to do in his 20 year career in the NBA but also what he's able to do and what implant he left on earth so again Thoughts and prayers go out to the Bryant family as well as all those other people that, uh, you know, they haven't named yet, but those other seven pastors that passed away. So uh, there's no easy transition into this review, but I'm going to try my best. So with that being said, let's get into this review. Episode 4 of The Outsider was titled Kivere Il Cuco. While retracing the Metlin's recent family vacation, Holly pursues a possible connection to an eerie similar case and gains valuable insight from a local former detective, Andy. Glory faces increased scrutiny in her daily life. All right, everybody, so we are here to break down the latest episode of The Outsider, episode four. Very, very excited to talk to you all about this episode, to break it all down with you all. Uh, but before we dive into it, for those that are new to this channel, definitely consider subscribing. Hit that bell so you can stay up to date with all my latest movie reviews, TV reviews, trailer reactions, unboxings, and giveaways that we do on this channel, so definitely subscribe. And if and when you've seen this episode of The Outsider, you know what you got to do, right? You got to leave your comments below. Let me know your pros, your cons, your theories, what you like, what you didn't like and what you picked out from this episode that can lead us into episode five so let's have some fun discussions in the comments below if you've been following me for a while you know i read the comments i respond to the comments and i appreciate the uh, responses that you guys give me so definitely leave some comments below there so let's break down the episode and get into the nitty-gritty in this spoiler discussion here so first and foremost the episode starts off with a i want to i don't want to call it a cold open because it all ties back into this episode but we start off with a flashback and we see the character that we saw kill himself in the cell last week as we find out, i don't know if they mentioned his name last week but we find out his name's heath and we see heath having breakfast with a young lady that we talk about a little bit later in the episode and we learned out her name is maria and we're going to talk about that scene a little bit later but it was a nice interesting open because we meet a new character in Maria and Marie and we also see how Marie and Heath knew each other we're going to talk about that in uh, later in the video but we get that kind of open there but let's kind of break it down in regards to our characters so starting off with Holly because she had the bulk of this episode and she found out a lot of information that's gonna give us some more tracks of what's to come in following episodes as far as you know the character, the, the the demon or the supernatural character, El Cuco, if I'm pronouncing that right, and everything she finds out there and the, and the connective tissue she's putting together with the murdering and the uh, the grief eater and all that stuff. So let's break it down with Holly. So Holly, you know, first scene that we get with her, we see that she calls Ralph and kind of fills him in on the connection between Terry's dad and, and everything she's kind of finding out about Heath and the murders and how it's kind of similar to Terry's situation. Uh, we see Holly follows the woman that we saw from last week's episode that works at the, uh, you know, the facility that uh, Peter uh, Terry's dad Peter was at and we see she sprays her in the eye with mace you know definitely want to keep your distance but we see that they kind of uh, you know amend that kind of breaky relationship from last week because it, it, you know the, the woman at the uh, the facility did not like the approach that Holly had to her but we see that she eventually invites her into her house and in this conversation we find out a lot of information so first and foremost we find out uh, the relationship between that young lady and Heath. And she tells Holly that <clears throat> Heath was a, a nice guy, uh, that he, you know, there's no way he can do these murders. He's a very open person. He's, he cares about his family. And there's no way he can do that. And that's where Holly says, you know, those are, you know, the murderers can be anyone. They can be people that you think are the nicest person in the world and they can murder someone. And she says she agrees with that, but she doesn't, in her, in her heart, she knows that Heath didn't do this. So in the midst of all this conversation here, 
we get a, a flashback within that conversation. And this flashback is pretty pivotal because in this flashback, you know, Holly uh, is being told by this lady that on the day of March 6th, you know, there was this kind of an incident between, you know, because the cops were obviously looking at uh, Heath's, uh, you know, background and who he interacted with and who his, you know, his people that he took care of in this, uh, this facility was and they come across Peter. And you see the scene, this flashback where we see Heath Heath, uh, maybe the, you know, as we, as the audience knows, Heath wasn't Heath. It was the, the, the mysterious figure, El Canino or El Catrono or the, the boogeyman, as they call him in this episode. We see that it's, it's, it's him in the form of Heath. And we see that pivotal moment that we find out about a couple of weeks ago from Terry's daughter, where Heath bumps into Terry and we see him scratch him. Very big moment there because we actually see it on screen and, and, and a very uh, interesting point there. And we also get another moment in the episode where we see someone else get scratched in our wrist. And we'll We'll talk about that later, but Holly decides to visit Peter, uh, Terry's dad, and this is another pivotal and, and important scene because in that scene, you know, Peter's kind of rambling about some other stuff about how he met Holly a long time ago, and it's at that point where Holly's just like, okay, this might be a lost cause. He might not be able to give me information, but then he says something very interesting to Holly in which he says, you know, he, you know, he says that, uh, you know, after, you know, he tells that story, that funny story that it wasn't him. He didn't do it. He really made you guys believe he did it, but he didn't do it. So very interesting moment there. I'm really interested to see what we learn more about Peter and if this is actually Peter and what Peter knows about Heath and his son and this mysterious boogeyman character. So something to keep an eye out for is if we visit Peter again, I wonder what kind of information he can give us. So from there, <clears throat> we see Holly meets back up with the security guard, the mall security guard that we met last week. And we find out he was with a detective and he invites her to dinner and all that stuff. And, you know, they're 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 chatting they're you know they're getting friendly and whatnot and she gives him some information about the the situation with the um with heath and everything that went down with heath after the aftermath of him being accused of murder what happened to his family so in the midst of all this stuff and keep in mind this is a very similar trait to what happened to the peterson boy family so we learn out we find out that heath he uh the cops thought that his brother did it which it, it was figured out that he didn't but his brother ended up Odin. we see that heath's mother kills herself, drives herself into a pole. We find out that Heath's grandparents, uh, his, his grandfather had a stroke and then his mother, his grandmother tried to, um, uh, kill herself by poison, but she ended up dying anyway. So again, going back to what happened to the Peterson family, we know that the Peterson, uh, one of the boys killed, um, Terry, but in the midst of him killing him, we saw that, you know, uh, uh Ralph killed him. We know that the, uh, Peterson mom died of a stroke or a heart attack or something of that nature. And then we saw that the Peterson's dad hung himself. So again, it's all connecting together. And we also find out why it's connecting together because this, uh, boogeyman is a grief eater. And we see that once something happens and once he kind of claims his victims he doesn't just stop there as you know the woman that we'll talk a little bit about later says that he doesn't just stop at the at, at the dinner but he has his dessert so very interesting moment there that we find out from that conversation in regards to the security guard telling holly about all the after effects of heath and his family so very interesting moments there and let me know in the comments was the woman that holly was talking to at that bar did we meet her yet or was this was a bartender that worked at the hotel that holly was at because it was very interesting the conversation they were having it was almost like Again, I might have missed something that Holly knew this woman and then she was telling her about the stuff that she was working on, which I don't think she would tell this a stranger. But then the woman says something interesting to her about murder being a virus, which again connecting the tissues there so we get that moment and holly finds out about heath's trip to new york which was very pivotal and we see that you know holly vis visits the, the woman again that works at peter's uh facility and she tells him that Heath sent her a postcard when he visited new york back in i believe the postcard was dated in february and on that postcard he mentions that he meets a girl going back to the beginning of the episode that girl maria is or marie is the girl that he met and we saw you know, they kind of had a moment, but <clears throat> in that moment, you know, when they hook up and they, you know, they sleep together, we see that he's back with Scratch due to, you know, them having, you know, intercourse, but also due to the fact that there was something in Marie, as we know, the boogeyman was in her and scratched her to pass on this virus to carry on their doing. So very, very interesting moments that we get there. 
Marie, you know, we also see, you know, we, we see Holly going to Marie's, uh, 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 going to Rikers Island and talking to Marie, which I thought was very interesting that Marie is still alive. Very interesting because everyone we know so far has been affected by this. And we know Jack, we're going to talk about Jack here in a bit, but from Terry to Heath, uh, and, and we might find out some more people that were uh, victims of this, you know, this creature's boogeyman, but she is still alive. So I find that very interesting, but we find out with uh, Marie being alive, <clears throat> that her other family was affected by her going to jail and also being accused of murder because we find out that's the connection with Heath and Marie that she was actually accused of murder and that's why she's in Rikers and we find out about her story uh, but we find out within her story that you know that she very similar situation to Heath to uh, Terry that she was nowhere near the murder scene and they're claiming her to murder these kids uh, but within that moment you know it's Marie is telling her about these moments we get before you know holly goes to the prison again we get this some somewhat of a flashback yet again when uh holly was going to Riker. she was in her cab and she's having a flashback of her being like getting tested when she was a child and we also find out that you know <clears throat> holly's mom died when she was younger uh from her mom taking care of her and all that stuff but Again, I don't know if I'm just making this up, but it seems like Holly has some type of shining type of abilities because we see that she was talking to her grandmother or her auntie or something of that nature, but she touches her face while she's in that machine, which we know is impossible because the machine's enclosed. So again, let me know. And again, for those book readers, don't let me, don't spoil anything, but it seems like she has some type of, to me, it seems like she has shining abilities, but I thought that was an interesting moment. But again, we find out about Marie and everything that she's accused of, <clears throat> accused of and we find out that Marie's dad and her uncle was killed by the... Uh, boy that Marie was accused of killing, uh, which again goes back to the grief eater. And again, everyone that's affected by this ends up dying, ends up killing themselves, end up killing someone else. So very interesting moments within this episode that we get with Marie or get with Marie and meeting her. And I'm excited to meet more of her and maybe getting more information from her if we do see her again. But Holly just found out a lot of stuff from this episode. Uh, so within that moment, we also see that Marie is very afraid to say what she knows about he. She calls him he. And if she says who he is or says his name, people will put her in a mental institution. And in the midst of that, we see that this young lady overhears that conversation and gives, you know, Holly, uh, which we find out to be probably her address. Uh, but very interesting moment. We're going to go back to that. We're going to see that, save that moment for the end. But in the midst of this episode, again, we got a lot with Holly and we're going to go back to the Holly moments. But we get some side scenes, if you want to call it that. We go back to Jack. We see Jack doing some interesting things. We see he kills a deer. We see that he gets a bunch of like camping gear and throws it all in the forest and we see that the deer that he shot I assume it was a deer that he shot was all butchered and cut up open and, and kind of devoured like we saw the boys that have been murdered in the previous episode from the Peterson boys so very interesting stuff there you know we see <clears throat> that the detective invites him to the baby shower so we don't get a lot with Jack we just see him doing things that I, I assume will be followed up in next week's episode but very interesting stuff there we see that he still has the scratch going on and we see at one point he was in his truck and it seemed like someone was in the truck with him so again this boogeyman is kind of really influencing him and I don't know if the boogeyman has given him his duties yet to tell him who he wants to kill maybe it's the I don't know if Jack should be attending this baby shower because we know that the this boogeyman likes kids he hasn't killed babies yet but he likes kids so we'll, we'll see what's going on with Jack but uh, a very small moment but uh, you know a pivotal moment we also see Gloria was interviewing to get her kid to get uh, homeschool but we find out that the person that interviewed with them was just a reporter so we don't get a lot with Gloria and, and the girls but we get that moment there uh, and she kicks her out and whatnot <clears throat> and we see that she gets threatened at the dinner and all that stuff so not a lot going on with Gloria and Jack but again these are just planting the seeds for things to come later on so going back to another main character <coughs> before we wrap this up and go back to the last moment that we get with Holly we see Ralph he he revisits the the tape of the the strip club incident where we saw Terry going to the strip club and, and scratching the owner and we see him go there and talk to Cla Claude I think his name was and gets a little information there but the biggest thing that we get with Ralph in this episode is he talks to the kid the kid wants to speak to Ralph again about the van being uh, taken and the very interesting thing that we get within that moment the kid you know doesn't remember or doesn't know the name of the person that he saw but he draws a picture of him and once he draws that picture of the uh of the mysterious boogeyman we see that the picture is very reminiscent to what we've seen of the boogeyman thus far we see that his face is disformed and it doesn't really have a shape to it so I thought that was a very interesting moment because that is Ralph's first time seeing what we have seen as the audience of what this mysterious figure is 
mean, this uh, boogeyman looks like. So very, again, the, the episode is really kind of focused on Holly and finding out everything about Marie and Heath and the connection and the murders and all the stuff of how the family is affected by that, which, by the way, we're going to finish the, uh, this review and this recap off. So going back to Marie or going back to Holly, I'm sorry. She visits the woman that gives her address and they have a conversation. They're talking about, you know, <clears throat> you know, the conversation in regards to, um, you know, uh, their beliefs. Do, does Holly believe in God and she believe in different devils? Uh, they talk about El Chicolo, I believe his name was, or Choco, and AKA the Boogeyman. They talk about them and how he's a, 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 a kind of a folk tale, a fairy tale. It's what kids tell their, uh, their, their, or what parents tell their kids to make them behave and go to bed and do their homework and things of that nature. Uh, but within this conversation, we find out that um, you know that this boogeyman can take the shape of other people, as we know so far in four episodes. We also find out that it's uh, he's a grief eater. That he doesn't just again he doesn't just kill these kids, these boys and these girls. That he also affects the family, as we know with Terry's family. Uh, you know, so far his wife and kids are still alive, but we'll see what happens with them. We know that that happened with the Peterson family. We find out what happened with Marie, and we also find out what happened to Heath. So it doesn't just affect one person; it affects the whole family. This this boogeyman has a hunger for grief and pain and, and agony and death so very interesting stuff there as the episode kind of wraps up we see Holly looking up this this mysterious character and googling the name and we see very interesting pictures from him uh eating people from him look taking the shape of other people but also seeing him with a hood over his head so again you know finishing up that recap there a lot of great stuff that we got from this latest episode in my opinion the show has been dark it's been gritty and it's getting more and more supernatural and I'm loving it it's still very grounded in reality but now that there's throwing in this boogeyman element and this folktale fairy tale element it's now getting into that Stephen King isms that we like to see from the fantasy stuff from a, a Pennywise or all his mysterious creatures that he has in his universe. So again, four for four for me. Uh, I'm really enjoying this uh, this show. I'm really enjoy I enjoyed this episode. Again, we find out about Marie. Hopefully, we get more information from her. We find out more about Peter. Hopefully, we revi revi revisit Peter and what he knows about what happened with his son. Uh, you know, we we have a picture now. Ralph has a, a, an idea of what this person looks like. I don't know if he believes the kid yet. Uh, something's going to have to happen for him to believe this mysterious figure is what this kid kind of recollect what he looks like so a lot of stuff i'm psyched to find out more in episode five but most importantly i want to know what you thought about this episode four let me know your likes your dislikes your theories everything in the comments again for the book readers you've done a good job of not spoiling anything and continue to do so but for those that haven't read the book or for those that have read the book still give me your thoughts your comments your theories without giving too much away let's have some fun discussions down there if you haven't already like i said up top subscribe to my channel hit that thumbs up button give this video a like it really helps out the channel uh like i said comment below follow me on all my social media accounts. Uh, I do a lot of Instagram lives on my page and I will be having a live later this week talking about my, uh, you know, my love and, and the hero, uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, that we lost this week. And again, my thoughts and prayers go out to those families. So again, thank you all for watching this review. I will be back next week reviewing episode five, but in the meantime, check out my channel for more, uh, reviews. We got trailer reactions coming this week. we got an unboxing this week for Terminator. So we got a lot of good content coming this week. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you all for watching this video video and we'll see you on the next one.